would like to dedicate today's session to one question. We are still proceeding with our series, Islamic Dating and Marriage Series. Who are you? That's a simple question. Who are you? Before you even think of proposing to someone, who are you? Do you really have an authentic answer to that? Guan. Are you imagining a relationship where someone who is proposing can't even give an answer to that? I want you to imagine a relationship where whoever is being proposed to can't even answer that question. And that's our session today. As simple as that. So before I even proceed, eh? Let me get two volunteers eh, that may try to answer that question in line with dating. Hmm? If you asked, challenged, and someone is like, who are you? Who is a mood that you are? Who is a guani? Who is a mood that you are? Who is a mood that you are? Eh? What would be your answer? Or maybe it may not be your personal experience, but it might be considering what you normally hear from others. Eh? We won't judge you in line with that. Eh? Who are you? Okay, let me cut the long story short. Allahul Azim, if you don't have an answer to that, don't dare waste someone's time. And surprisingly, it seems we all don't have an answer to that. But if you have not put up the hand, that means even when you're married, you really have to think about that. Who are you? I normally advocate for the Islamic style of dating, and I'm like, if at all we have good, real, authentic questions that are going to guide us, to being better people as we get our spouses, these are some of the most credible questions we need. Who are you? Factor number one, consideration of personal experiences. Before you think of proposing to, th to someone, have you considered thinking and analyzing their personal experience? And with personal experience, I, I, I'm meaning the family background. It might be their style of parenting. Is he or she a product of single parenting? Or maybe what situation is there? All personal experiences. Not only that, an example. Have you imagined ever about a relationship where a guy was single parented by a single dad and you really think you don't have time to think about that do you really think a lady who was single parented by a mom only a mom that factor alone dictates very many behaviors in line with those people respectively that factor alone also affects the way they reason and the way they think. True or false? How many of we take time to analyze that before you even think of saying to someone that you love them? So the Islamic guidance is, you don't waste someone's time if at all you don't have an answer to this. So the who are you is a question that is dedicated to whoever is proposing to someone and maybe at the same time concurrently dedicated to whoever is receiving the proposal. If at all, it's a lady receiving the proposal. The personal experiences. There are staged marriages. The marriage that is staged. Just a few hours, my brother confessed to me that he had an authentic story from a friend, actually from a sister. And she was like, there was a marriage that was staged just because a lady wanted the pressure of the family to be called off. She decided to get married to a guy, and after a month, divorce happened, 
And the family was like, okay, we are fine. Good enough, you tried marriage. And those marriages are there. Marriages are staged. That is a personal experience. Do you really think the mind of that lady is still reasoning normally? And all you're thinking of is, I love you, I have feelings for you. I feel okay when you're sounding good, nicely at night, when you're deepening the voice. Come on, it's far beyond that. You have to reason outside the bracket. So the Islamic guidance is, if at all you can't answer that question, you're in the wrong place. Don't waste someone's time. One, you have to first analyze yourself. Who are you that is trying to propose? If at all you have an answer to that, that will easily guide you to get to know your right partner, your right type, if at all you've answered the first question. Who are you respectively? Even if you're God. If you answer that, that question, who are you, it will basically guide you to knowing who you're going to give a chance. But if you're still perturbed and perplexed between the personalities differently, you're going to get issues as you're going to start your dating. Whatever I'm giving you right now, we have not yet even started the I love you situation. You're still doing a background check about yourself. You're still realizing yourself. Last session we were discussing love and we made it clear that love is just mere emotions. You can't draw your decision basing on mere emotions. No. And here today we are asking ourselves, who are you? Are you the right person to propose to someone? And the first factor is, have you considered the personal experiences of you who is proposing and whoever you're proposing? If you're a girl and you're receiving a proposal, who are you the lady? If you answer that, you will also get time to analyze the personal experience of whoever is proposing to you. If a guy is raised up by only a dad, do you know how, how many false statements the guy might be having about ladies? If at all every night and every day, the single dad is like, never trust a woman. Women are hell. They are thieves. Don't dare trust a woman. If you're to trust a woman, don't get back to me with any. When you're shedding maybe tears. That's a human being, and it's the reality happening today. Because even the rate of divorce is high. People are being single-parented when they are six years old, and they are going to grow up to be 25. They will also think of proposing to someone, because they are normal. After all, they are having sexual desires. They have to propose. And have you even imagined about a girl that is single-parented by only a mom? Do you know how many girls are trained way back from home? False statements, generalizing all men. Men can be trusted. Men are dogs locally. Men are blah, blah, blah. It's because of the experience of this single mom. So the Islamic position is you have to take time to analyze all that. These personal experiences. Maybe you can even be of help of letting them realize that there is a world besides the world they know. I request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide us to the best. And what I want us to consider, in line with considering the personal experiences at the previous relationships, do you really think a guy who was conned seriously by a, 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 a guy who was conned and lied to by a lady. Maybe the guy was sincere and he was into this girl a lot. He, 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 he sacrificed a lot for the girl. And at the 11th hour, the girl is like, to hell, I don't love you. Yet he has invested millions and millions in this girl. I want you to imagine the next relationship this guy is going to have. If you are a girl and you get to know that this is the guy that has proposed to me with that personal experience, trust me, that alone will position you to understand the guy that is to you. First of all, he will have trust issues on default. You really think a girl who has been lied to by fake masters who are guys, thrice or maybe once, 
Whenever you leave a relationship as a disappointment, you are affected psychologically, you are affected the way you reason, you are even affected within the society you are living in. And you are creating problems for whoever is going to get in the same field after you. These are the personal experiences. So Islam is like, you have to realize and analyze that too. If you've lost maybe many relationships and not working out, and you were a guy, take time to ask yourself, who are you? That alone might guide you to find your mutual partner in girls. But if you give it a blind eye, a deaf ear, trust me, you must regret, even after you get to marriage. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us. And don't underestimate that. You know how many heartbreaks are being, are just taking place, just as we are speaking right now. Someone is being called off. Just as we are speaking. Maybe you're here and you've been called off last night. It's very possible. So the Islamic stand is, you have to take time to also think about that. Thinking to propose to a lady who has tried relationships sincerely, she's a nice Muslim and it's not working out, or maybe she was conned, or maybe she was lied to. The way you're going to approach a girl who has spent five years trying different relationships, not working out, maybe they're lying to her, to the extent of some of the men don't even come to the day of nikah when, everyone, when everything has been catered for. You really think it's the same way you're going to consider when you're going to someone as a first love or maybe partner? These are two different stories. You have a lot to do to convince a girl, a lady, who has gone through that. And a lady, you have a lot to convince a guy who has just been brought up by a single mom. He has a lot of stuff, negativity to the ladies. It's you to think about that. And that's the personal experience. Come on, come on, come on. If at all we are too smart to that extent of answering that, that question, we are going to have positivity in line with our relationships even before we start dating. So I'm challenging you with that question. And that's only one factor. Check out the second factor. Before I even get to the second one. I know many relationships may not be working out. The previous relationships. And the more you leave a relationship, maybe the relationship isn't working out. You are affected and you are put down. The depression is just too high. Please and please. That's a feeling. It shouldn't be a reason to call off whoever is bringing a proposal to you. Don't deny yourself a sweet feeling of loving someone. Yeah, maybe, maybe you're depressed and you're busy calling off everyone that is getting to you just because someone lied to you. And maybe they're the right people. Yeah, you, you should actually consider that. Eh? Yeah, irrespective of gender, if you're a guy and you're a girl, Consider that. Lady, consider that. Eh? If at all you've gone through a divorce, you've gone through some fake relationships, and maybe you want to Islamize it, consider that. All the depression you're going in, it shouldn't be an opaque substance to whoever is proposing to you. Maybe he's the right guy, and he wants to give it a try. Yeah, take it, give it a try. Of course, Islamically, as we are to see. And the second factor, we are still answering the same question. Who are you? Have you considered analyzing different personality disorders of people and do you know how we are affected by those disorders in our behaviors let me just pick out some we have the narcissist it's a personality disorder these are the people who believe they are worth nothing they are too special to If you're in a relationship with them, they are important. They are just actually, these are the people that even normally locally say, You don't even deserve me. Eh? I'm here. I'm just, too, I'm just too much for you. Eh? I'm here. I'm just doing you a favor. It's a disorder for God's sake. If you realize that you're that hard and you're having that as a disorder, you will welcome it and you will find a way of dealing with it. Who told you that we, when you're a lady, 
that is being dated. You have to be with this disorder. That's arrogance. The same applies with guys. And we are with people, people who are dating right now, they are in a relationship, they have not yet even discussed that. And it's a serious factor. That's why you are having even issues of birthdays. How dare you call off a relationship? For a mere birthday? Because they believe they are just too that special. If you forget their birthday, you're someone who is not valuing them and they need to call you off. It's a very serious personality disorder. Are you that or you're not? And we also have a dependent disorder. It's another disorder. Someone who is too dependent. They believe everything for them have, has to be into the responsibility of someone else, irrespective of gender. And if it's a disorder, it can never be nice in the society. No one would like that. So the Islamic stand is, give it time for God's sake. Before you switch to a girl, you have a lot to do onto yourself, to work upon yourself. Who are you? If you don't have an answer to that, you don't qualify to stand, to beautify your voice, to tell a lady that you love them and you feel something for them. But if I told you analyze this carefully, then how lucky is a lady that you're going to propose to? How lucky is a guy that is going to come to you when he has already done this homework? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the best. And lastly, in line with disorders, I'm just trying to rush because I've been already late. We have the obsessive. Yeah, the obsessive compulsive personality disorder. You know what that means? It simply means someone who needs to keep everything in order and under control. They don't want to feel like they're being controlled at any point. It's a disorder. How are you going to live in the society with that disorder? Imagine a wife who is having that disorder. And you really think she won't be advocating for feminism. This is a girl who is going to be like, if you're my husband, you have five days for pampering the baby, I also have five days. You have five days in the kitchen, I also have five days in the kitchen. But when it gets to billing, it's on to you alone. This is the disorder they're having. And it has to be catered for. If you get to know that disorder, as you, before you even switch to them, you already know how you're going to handle someone. Maybe it's a value you're going to change into them. Now you see the hard work you have before you even you switch to someone who is putting on a nice niqabi and jilbab and then you propose to them. There is some good work to do. Background check. All these are disorders and for God's sake, they are eating up our societies as hell. And we need to deal with them. I want you to just imagine a husband who is having that as a disorder. A husband who needs everything in order and they never want to feel like they are controlled. How are you even going to manage marriage? This is when you're going to enter the house. Of course, the house, it's a palace for your wife. And you've staged a TV somewhere in the sitting room. Maybe the wife is seeing something else and she's busy trying to be creative. It's going to be a case in your marriage because you're having this as a disorder. You're even forgetting that you're in her field. So this is the discipline Islam gives us. You have to challenge yourself as having this question. Who are you? Before you have that answer, you don't even qualify for someone coming to you. Pray to Allah to give you the answer to that so that someone switches to you when you're having that answer. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the best. And then the other factor is in line with answering our question, have you considered different several behaviors socially? I feel proud when I'm saying this. The introversy story and the extroversy story. An introvert is someone who enjoys, they find it, they, they find the confidence whenever they are alone and everything is normal. Their energy and power is being attained whenever they are alone. Those are introverts. And an extrovert is someone who gets their energy, attains the energy whenever 
they are associating with others. This is someone who comes within us. He knows no one here. And after 30 minutes, almost everyone is a friend. They have contacts, they've already connected. They are an extrovert and they feel the power and energy whenever they keep relating with people, with other people. I want you to imagine a relationship of an extrovert and an introvert that are too lazy to answering this question. This is when they are going to have wrangles. Because whenever an introvert will be like, I need my own time, maybe the wife will be an extrovert and she will be like, come on, am I not good enough with you? You must, you're supposed to be with me everywhere I am. In the sitting room, you're supposed to be together. In the dining room, you're supposed to be together. Whenever you're going, I'm supposed to be with you. It won't work when someone is having that as a social discipline when they are introverts. Are you feeling my magic or I'm wasting time? So are you, are you an introvert or you're an extrovert? You have to know that. If you're a wife to an extrovert, you have issues, come on. You have to know that before you even get to marriage. Before even they date you. Because this is a guy who is going to come to your friends and he will put on a smile, easily say, how are you? They will start connecting, easily. Where do you come from? Come on, you will find it too bad. And you will draw to a conclusion, this guy is a womanizer. He's just a victim of his social discipline. He's an extrovert. They hate getting closer to them when they don't know you. To an introvert, come on, it's another whole story. So long as they're in their room with the phone, everything they need, they even spend the whole day there and it's fine. They are not bothered. Give it a try to an extrovert. Spending the day without creating a new friend, it's too bad to them. Who are you? Are you an extrovert or an introvert? You need to answer that. And if you're guided in that way, that's when you're going to get your rightful partner. If you're going to switch to a relationship of an extrovert and you're an introvert, it will help you to harmonize everything because you already know whoever you're dealing with. Drama comes in when you're still striving with knowing yourselves. You're already claiming you love each other and you can't live without them. Yet you can't simply answer who you are. And you want someone's daughter. You want someone's son to propose to you. So the Islamic discipline is don't waste people's time if you don't even have an answer to a very simple question, as simple as, who are you? This is the Islamic discipline. The other issue is the social behaviors. I want you to imagine a girl who, is, who has been nurtured in a party way. First of all, there was a baby shower before she was even given birth to. After being given birth to, it's another party now. It's a party. There is also another party. I don't know how authentic this is, but I saw it on social media when the baby is now having, is it one tooth? And then it's a, a party worth putting. Okay, the baby is now having a, a tooth. Eh? So this girl has gone to kindergarten. Eh? There is a full graduation as she finishes kindergarten to go to P1 elementary now. After P1, P7, there is a smartphone waiting for the girl. And a very big party because she's now growing up. P7 easy, done. So they are heading to senior four. There's another party after all level. Thank you for growing up. We are proud of you. After senior six, our girl, be careful at campus. Another party now, the family is sending her off. After graduation, it's another party. After getting a job, it's another party. They are being appraised at, at the job. Maybe she, she has gotten a job now. It's another party. You really think you're going to come with your ilim and iman to tell, to convince that girl that parties are not good? Are you feeling me? And that's why you're going to have issues in your marriage. Eh? 
Instead of discussing where our kids are going to study from, you as low as discussing why haven't you celebrated me on my birthday. Women is in there, you have to, to also strive, eh? you go and buy something, it's a women's day, eh? you have to wake up, uh, up from bed, breakfast there, eh? what are you celebrating? It's women's day. The day will come and you're going to forget whatever you've, you're doing on women's day. It will be a case in your family. You have to be as good as analyzing that too. If that's the girl you're dating, and you know that priorly, before you even propose to her, I'm not go trying to promote that unreasoning within girls. But what I'm trying to promote is, if you're a guy and you know that you're dating that girl, you know what you're going to do. And if you're having that commitment, it's okay, it's fine, give it a try. But if at all you can't, you're in the wrong place, my brother. Maybe you're just having smiles here as you're dating. Wallahu alazim, as you switch to marriage. That's when you're going to have senses as she will still be demanding every party so long as she believes it's worth party so the islamic guidance is you reason that out before you even propose to someone do a background check if that's the lady you're going to discuss maybe to start something with it's not bad to table that on the table and you're like what's your view on celebrating you on the birthday that's when they will be like Oh no, I, I just feel too bad if someone forgets my birthday and then, okay, you listen to that crap now. And then you challenge them after a sweet, a sweet discussion and you're like, okay, maybe you let them reason out and they will call off their right of being celebrated every when their birthdays come. And who is supposed to be celebrated? What did you do to be there? Are you supposed to celebrate the parents or you? You never did anything anyway. Maybe you're even a burden to your parents. You're doing opposite than what they want. We celebrate your parents for doing some good hard work for you to be there. And that's a right worth claiming and instability in marriage. Just because of that, you do that background check. You ask yourself, who are you and who is whoever you're proposing? It's a solution before you even switch to the dilemmas after the dating situation. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to that. And then lastly, have you considered the difference in our cultures? I'm a Mugisu. You're a Muganda. You're a Munyankore. You're from Rwanda. Maybe you're a Somali. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Every culture, every culture has their beliefs and values. An example. The way the Baganda show respect to someone might not be the way the Somalis show respect to others. True or false? When a Muganda is showing respect to, I'm not trying to, to promote racism, feel the magic in whatever I'm explaining. When a Muganda is trying to show respect to you and there are ladies, she will merely kneel down and you will feel respected. Isn't it? You know, you know what happens with... I'm having very many friends of mine that are Somalis, of course. Brother Salah knows. You know what they do when they love you a lot and they respect you? They come to you, they touch your beard with a peck on the hand. That's them. And when they do that, you're loved and they respect you. Do that to a Muganda man. Touch to their beard, into their beards. You're disrespecting them. True or false? That's now a topic at home. I want you to imagine the marriage between a typical Muganda man and a Somali girl without taking time to appreciate the difference in cultures. You feel the magic. A simple example. My teacher, Dr. Ola Abdul Hafiz, narrated to me a simple story. You know the bread, eh? There's this calof on top of the bread. That's just, it doesn't look nice, eh? There is a group of people that believes 
that you're supposed to give them that kapat. Are you feeling my point? That kabito on the bread, eh? If you give them that kapat, you've respected them. Ah, they feel they have eaten the whole of the bread now. And there is a group of people, when you give them that, you've disrespected them. Why are you giving me that? Give me a, a loaf of bread, a well-designed one, not this unright one. And people are busy calling off marriages, considering those minor stuff. My wife is not respecting me because they are not doing this. And when I can't go get him, the sitting position. When a Muganda lady is sitting, when you're there and you're gents, there is a separate way they do sit. Two of us, just like they are right now, alhamdulillah. There is a culture that won't sit like that. And it's okay all to them. Maybe it doesn't make sense to them to sit like that. Who are you in line with that? That's when you're going to get to know that you're dating the wrong person. Maybe you won't get in line. Before you even propose to them, for God's sake. You are still striving with getting the answer of who you are yourself before you propose to someone. And you also have some good homework to do onto someone you're going to date. Or maybe onto someone who has proposed to you. This is how sweet Islam guides us. Guess what? There's a reason as to why I wanted to bring that preamble, preamble before I come in with these verses. Because normally, if we bring verses first, if we bring the tradition of Prophet Muhammad first, there is a misconception that people get to know that all you have to do is to submit. Eh? Now these verses are going to make sense. That's when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala awdhu billahi minash shaitan rajim Al-Khabithatu lil khabithin Badika nunkira bin libanak The consideration of the social economic status yours and for whoever you're proposing Ladies, let me pose a question to you. Have you imagined the marriage where a lady has went into that marriage when everything is said? Today, the campaign that is there, they are decampaigning for girls, innocent girls, to switch to marriage first claiming if you switch to marriage first, why are you going to build yourself? I don't want to hear those stories of building ourselves together. I want to come when everything is is done. Have you imagined how psychologically an innocent girl is tortured in a home where she also knows she has no contribution to the well-being of this guy? And where do you think the property story comes from? How are you going to convince a guy you've went to, well established, they are having their residence, they are having their rides around, maybe 35, he has been single with some two kids, maybe, and you're there claiming love is there. After a year, that's when you're going to realize that there is a possibility of this guy not valuing you because he believes you're a property. Just like he achieved other properties, you're also in there for him. Is it the reality or not? It's a reality. I wouldn't advise my sister. I normally even make it a point to them. I don't want you to go as a second or maybe third, not in a bad mood, but I want my sister to be of help, to, be, to build her husband. It's a pride of a wife. And that you are gaining your value as a wife. Even a man will get afraid to disrespect you because he knows deep inside. Even when he marries other people, you have done something added onto them. It's the reality happening now. Have you considered analyzing that? Do you really think you deserve a lady 
who is done with campus and he's given an apartment by his by her father she's given a, an apartment by her father saying okay my daughter stay in that apartment it's okay it's your apartment and you're busy renting a 200 apartment 1000 apartment if you don't answer that question before you propose to her you will keep having wrongs after you propose to her even after you're done with marriage abantu mwe musagira mbintu bino mu minimizing ebintu bino you will undermine whatever we are discussing i request allah whoever is in marriage here to not fall victim of whatever we are discussing let them be guided to get to the right partner and whoever is married and you feel it's making sense it's not too late table it with your partner make sense out of it it will never be too late if at all your partner is a receiving one you will also adjust this is what we are having and that's why allah is like al khabithatu lil khabithin the impure ladies will easily connect with the impure guys how they have a lot in common yeah of course it makes sense you impure i'm impure We have a lot in common. We are going to get in line together very very fast without with ease. Everything is just normal. And then Allah was like, "Wal khabithuna lil khabithat." This is the balance in the equation now. Even the impure men will easily get attached to the impure ladies. And with the impurity we mean the impureness, impureness in behavior, the impurity in speaking the impurity in all aspects of life socially economically all aspects of aspects of life the impurity is there i posed the question last week i was like you really want to make sense in a lady sleeping with five guys you really think she's going to feel comfortable with you as a virgin a man is also a virgin eh omusaji abirachi eh we muto yomani ba last time ne munga ba ti kagamu chikena yogera oye hm for for ni catres ne munga ba takali yo ninga ba na yo zungu nganjo kederufu ningenda ku google nakasanga yo ngate ba kagamba ti katuf eh so a guy who is a virgin you want this guy to confidently content or bring contentment to that girl are you feeling me you really want are you making sense in a guy who has slept with more than five girls he is now getting to an innocent lady virgin you really think how many this girl here a virgin one probability of her satisfying this guy is very too low she knows nothing you know everything you don't want to know the sweetness in a couple au be musa asira anti bafala the sweetness in a couple where a guy is a virgin and a lady is also a virgin you don't know how sweet they enjoy their marriage because they won't even realize they have nothing to compare for god's sake you don't want to be in a relationship where you compared to the extent of the bed you compared by someone are you seeing the essence of allah saying al khabithatu lil khabithin the impure easily connecting men the, the the women who are impure they easily connect with the men who are impure and the men who are impure easily connect with the ladies that are impure and then allah was like wa tayyibatu ya tayyibin nice sweet respected ladies will always be for the nice sweet morally upright men because they also have a lot in common a guy who is a practicing muslim will easily connect with a lady who is a practicing muslim they have a lot in common they will even have they will, they will even not have time to discuss wa ma can we sleep one together 
as we are planning, they don't have that as a discussion. Because they have a lot in common. You see how they are easily connecting? That is it. It will not make sense if the impure gets to the pure. This is when you're going to find a guy saying, this girl doesn't know anything. She's too boring. What do you want her to do? That's not her field. Yes, she doesn't know anything. That's when you find a girl saying, this guy doesn't know anything. One month, nothing like a kiss. It's okay. He doesn't know anything because it's not making sense before they marry you. That's why Allah is making sense out of this verse. The pure, morally upright women will always get too close and attached to the morally upright ladies. It will always be there. Even the men that are upright, morally, socially, eh, religiously, of course, they can easily get connected with ladies who are that. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that ability. Eh? It's a verse. You know, at times when I have issues with people who, with people who, with people, with people who recite verses, bring out traditions, and they don't bring out all the lessons we learn out of them. You're doing injustice to Islam. Who told you that every verse you recite, the upper meaning you're getting is the only authentic one? Are we supposed to be having different tafsir? Tafsir ibn Kathir, tafsir ibn Razi, tafsir, tafsir, tafsir. Different tafsir? What? what are they translating for God's sake? They are translating the words of Allah. That simply means there is diversity in Islam. And it's making sense now. That's why in the third verse of Surah Al-Nur, Allah was like, Azani la yankihu illa azaniya. Nkazem, efoniketa will not marry unless they are getting in line with the foniketress. No apologies in Kogende. Foniketress, Jekali. They will easily get attached. Well, of course, they, everything is in line, of course. They, everything is making sense. Today I love you. Tomorrow I miss you. The third day uh, I'm into you. Manabwe, I can't live without you. The fourth day, let's go out for tea. Okay, it's fine. Let's go. There are only two. The fourth day, that's an hour, a Thursday. Eh? Mm, I, I want to see. Do you even have some good hair, nice hair? They take pictures. You send to them. Okay, it's fine. Wow, I feel you've already, you've already turned me on. I'm off the hook. Eh? Now on the weekend, you plan. Hmm? Let's meet here. It, it has to get done. So the guy is making sense out of that because that's him anyway. And the lady is fine with them because it's okay. It's fine, of course. That's her normal life. That's how they are easily getting in line. Think. Our mushrika. If you don't marry. Someone that is in line with that, Allah promised you that you're going to get someone, mushrika, someone who is immoral religiously. Even a lady that is good in fornicating, she easily gets connects with a guy who is good in that. Eh? I want you to imagine a couple where a guy has a lot to compare and a girl also has a lot to compare. Eh? They know all different styles. They know all different good words. But I don't know what we are We are in a world where virginity is backwardness. Eh? Even a girl is very shy to say, I'm a virgin. It's okay, you be a fala. It's very fine to be a fala, and you have another fala in the guise. You move your marriage with fala squared. It's very fine. It's better than being a fala, and your partner is too experienced. Come on, you don't want to be there. 
May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the best. If we take time to analyze that as Muslim youths, I believe whatever we are discussing, you've not yet even confessed anything to whoever you're going to propose to. You're still dealing with yourself. Who are you? If you have no answer to that, you don't deserve, you have no audacity to stand onto your two legs and propose to a girl. If you're a girl and you can't answer to that, you have no right to say, I love you too, to a guy. Because you're going to do injustice to whatever you're sharing. Three factors and as I wind up, we get, we get to the question session. The one factor is, that's the Islamic dating. We promote realness. You have to be real. If you... <laughs> there is a guy who is 25 years now, old. He is a product of a typical traditional family where a, a lady, wife, is trained. They normally even guide the ladies before they get married. There's a lot of unauthentic advices they give to ladies. Who told you that you're going to get married to Abasajja? You're going to get married to Omusajja. You have to learn your Omusajja instead of learning Abasajja. What are you training if you're teaching them to Abasajja? And how dare you? Who gives you a right to dictate my partner's behavior? We have a guy who is trained as he's 25, 30 years old. All he has seen is her, his mom giving stockings to the dad, taking water to the bathroom, warm water, of course, even when the shower is there. Eh? And what else? Eh? You have to kneel down and you do massage, you massage the legs. If you don't do that, even when you're tired, you're too bad, you're not doing, being a good wife. Don't we have those guys? I want you to imagine a relationship, marriage, dating, Islamically, of course, between that guy who has not even given it time to look for another traditional girl this side so that the marriage matches. That's where you're going to find our Iman. Iman is my sister now. Iman is not that, maybe. Eh? You're busy telling her, put for me water in the shower. She will ask you, but the shower is there. You can switch warm and cold and you bathe. What do you want me to do? No, I want you to put it in the jerry can because you have no right to question me. I grew up and that's what my mom is doing for my dad. You have to do that. Have you imagined that marriage? Aren't we calling off some simple, simple, funny issues that people, people normally raise? as they are getting partners, or maybe as they are in marriage. We also have a girl who is being raised and in the evening, maybe when the next day is the nikah, there are five aunties there. The first auntie maybe is divorced. The second auntie is having issues within her marriage. The third auntie is Funny, funny background, maybe. I, I don't want you to misconcept me. I'm not calling off what nice aunties are doing. But let me call off what funny aunties are doing. They are busy giving, spoiling innocent girls. Before they get married, trying to refer them to their marriages. That's a very bad thing to do. Maybe your marriage never worked out because of funny issues and her marriage might work out and they're busy training a girl or you know call about you have to do this for your husband you have to do this for the husband whoever is telling you you have to do this for the husband is trying to train you that they know your husband better than you do someone is, you've spent with a year and two years and you think you don't know them and they know him better than you 
This is why we have to answer the who are you. We are solving funny, funny story stuff before you even propose to someone. Don't you really think we are going to enjoy marriage if we consider this? Yeah, that is it. If you do a background check on a lady, and this lady has tried relationships for more than two times, it's not working out. She's being called off, she's being depressed, or maybe disappointed. There's a specific way to approach that lady. If you know whatever she's going through, you know what to do. We do have a guy who is also in the same situation. He is trying to find a right partner. He's finding the first girl. The first girl doesn't like him. And she is lying to him. With investment, of course. Because whenever a guy loves, they give gifts blindly. Take the phone, take everything, take the money. They, they think it's onto, onto them. And they are disappointed once, twice, thrice. So you're coming with your to that guy. Eh? Do you really think, what are you going to say that they never say it to him? If you do a background check as he proposes to you, you know how you're going to handle them if you're giving them a chance. If you're not ready for that drama, you better call it off. Let them find their other partners that are in the same situation, but can have you. Because that's what they are, respectively. I request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us that understanding as we are dating. I request Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to guide whoever isn't married yet to the right track. And whoever is married, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make use of whatever we are discussing today. Eh? So that they guide them to the right track. Allahumma ameen. Don't underestimate whatever we are sharing, brothers and sisters. It's very vital. If you're in a relationship right now with your someone, table this. Welcome the different personalities we've discussed, the different disorders. That's when you're going to know a disorder of your partner. If you know it, it's better than you not knowing it. When you know something coming, you know how to deal with it. It's better than not knowing something that is coming. Yeah? I think it's making sense. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guide us to the best. Wa barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.